Konnichiwa, Samurai James here. I've got my nephew Chris to help me get armored up, so we're going to show you how to armor up when you have assistance. Hi. Cool. Let's get started. And real quick, before I get geared up, everything in this video that I'll be wearing is from Iron Mountain Armory. I purchased it myself. This was not anything that they gave me or that was a sponsored video. However, I did ask Mr. Astorita to review the video and give me some feedback before posting it, and he did, which I greatly appreciate. Now, if you're looking for a suit of armor, then I certainly suggest Iron Mountain Armory. I am an affiliate with them, and if you use the affiliate links in the description below, I get a little bit of credit with them towards purchasing some more armor and using that to bring you more stuff that I can get and put on and review and provide you with more content for the channel. Now, throughout this video, you're going to see one side where I'm showing the pieces of armor that I'm putting on for that portion, and you're also going to see some drawings on the side. Those drawings are from the Tanki Yoriaku Hikoben, which I probably didn't pronounce quite right, but it is a historical document showing one of the ways that you can put on samurai armor. Anyway, let's get geared up. While getting dressed with assistance, this might look pretty similar to how I did it when I didn't have assistance, and I'm going to be starting by putting on the jacket first, and then I'm going to move on to the pants. For the pants, it's exactly the same as when I didn't have help. I'll be tying off the hemo straps and keeping them underneath so that the belt doesn't hang out and can't be grabbed during combat. Not as important when you're in armor, but more important when you're out of armor because that gives a great handhold to grab onto and take control of your opponent. Now, these first few steps, I could have my nephew helping me out with tying it off, but I opted to do that myself. And I'm also going to be opting to do the lower parts of my legs on my own as well, simply because I'm used to it and it's easier. I'm putting the Kogake through the Waraji and then pulling them into the back, tying them off, and then pulling up the fabric so that the Suniate will sit on top of it. And we're going to be working from left to right, top to bottom. So I started with the left Kogake and Waraji, finished those off, and now I'm moving on to the right. Once that's done, we're going to move on to the Suniate. Now for the Suniate, left to right again, and we're going to be tying it off above the calf with the top lace to help keep it from sliding down. The lower lace is to help pull it up against the shin and really snug it into place. I use regular bows for this. If you have more lace, you could certainly do a fancy bow that would look a little bit prettier, or you could even wrap it around to the back and tie it off in the back so that there's no visible bow in the front. I like to have the double wrap, and I don't mind tying it off in the front to achieve that. With my legs complete from the knees down, I'm going to move on to the Yoroi Obi. That's the padded belt that goes underneath of the armor. This does not go on top and is not meant to hold your swords. I'm going to be putting it up a little bit above my waist where I want the Haidate to sit at and where I want the dough to be sitting on at the bottom edge of it. And I'm going to be showing you that here in a few moments. Now here's where things began to differ with the Haidate. I actually have some help, so I'm going to have him hold it into place on me and then pull the straps around as I lift my arms up to help raise up the jacket just a little bit so that it helps keep the high date in place. That way when I'm trying to lift my arms overhead, it won't be pulling on the high date, which would be tied off a little bit lower when I don't have help to do it. We're gonna tie it off securely in front and then just like I did when I didn't have help with armoring up, we're gonna take that lace there in the front, we're gonna pull that up and we're gonna put it over one shoulder and tie it into place. On some historical armors, it's not cords in the middle of the high date. They actually have the Kohazi and Seme toggles, just like you would see at the top of the Watagami and the dough that attaches the shoulder straps to the front of the breastplate to hold it up. They would have the toggle inside of the breastplate and then the matching piece on the high date. And after you put on the dough, you would actually just latch your high date up to the dough to help hold it there. This is especially useful if you ever had to take the high date off, if you were perhaps going across a river or anything else where you'd be getting your lower parts wet, and maybe want to take the high date off to keep that you know wet fabric out of the way. Of course, you would also have the option to take off the suniate and kogake as well to keep those from getting wet. Now, this is a step that I did miss when I had the armoring up on my own video. I constantly forget about having the straps around the thighs because I didn't have it on my armor for six or seven years, so it's just not a habit that I'm used to. The strap around the back of the thigh is somewhat optional on mine. It helps keep things in place. Since mine are the Kiritsuki Kozani, which are a scale all the way across, it's a simulated scale. I don't have a lot of left and right flexibility in it, as you would with many other styles of Haidate, so it's 
a little bit solid, doesn't really move left to right when I'm lifting my legs. It's not so much an impediment for my movement, but it's one of those things where the Hidate itself doesn't really move around that much in comparison to other styles. So I actually bent mine slightly to help it contour to the shape of my thighs a little bit better. Now with assistance, I'm going to be putting on the kote, the do, and the sode as three separate items rather than all at once tied together as you saw in the other video. The reason for this is I'll be able to get it tied into place a little bit better when I have some help and it's going to help hold things in place a little bit more securely while still letting me move a little bit better. We start with the left kote just as we did before starting left to right on the bottom we continue as we work our way up so the left kote comes first I'll get that into place and adjust it properly. After that we're going to move on to the right kote which will also be put on, laced up, and then tied off underneath of the opposite side armpit. So it'll be making a bit of an X in front of my chest and behind my back. Whereas in the video where I was doing it by myself, I had the strings tied together rather than across under my armpits because in order to get the dough up on myself, I can't tie those strings off there with any sort of proper tension either. Now you might have noticed the green strings hanging down from the top of my kote. That's going to be tying them up to the wadagami shoulder straps on the dough once we actually get everything into place. Now that both kote are on and tied underneath of both armpits, I'm going to be tightening up the lacing. I'm going to be getting my fingers through the loops underneath of the teko, which are the hand guards, and then making sure that it's lined up right at the top of my shoulders to prepare for putting on the dough. Mobility check, stretch out the arms to make sure everything's good to go. Now let's get the dough on. Now this is a lot easier when I have help. What's going to happen is I'm going to be holding the dough in place in front, and I'm holding it so that the bottom of the dough on that upper plate that's sitting on my chest is sitting right on top of the padded uwa obi that I put on earlier that the haidate are also sitting on top of. That's going to help keep the weight from sitting on my shoulders and push it down into that padded belt so that I'm not carrying all of the weight directly on my shoulders. This is something that's very important when you're wearing the armor for a long time to help reduce fatigue. Now with the Kohaze and Seme toggles from the Watagami shoulder straps connected to the dough in front, that's going to hold it up on me. Now with the kote fully secured to the top of the wadagami straps, we're going to be tying off on the side of the dough. Mine has a set of two strings and a loop in the back, so one string from the front is passed through the loop in the back, pulled forwards, and then it's tied off in a regular bow. The next step is those green laces that were hanging off of my kote are actually being tied up into little loops on the top of the wadagami. Then this was done beforehand before I put it on when I put it on myself when I didn't have help in the other video. But in this case, since I do have help, it lets me have them into place exactly like I want them and tied off and then just attaching them up to the watagami to help prevent them from sagging. You don't want a lot of tension on it because that can tear out at the lacing. Now that the dough is in place, we're going to take that extra odoshi that was hanging off of the kote and we're going to tie it up to some loops that are in the top of the watagami straps. Now this is something that I added myself that it did not come with. However, since I have the osode, Mine has a ring in the center that it ties to, and it had preset holes in case I wanted to go to regular sode in the future, which attach at two points instead of one. As I've said a few times now, working left to right, we're going to get the left kote tied up, and then we're going to do the right kote. With the dough and the kote in place, we're going to move on to the sarashi. Mine wraps around three times, so in this case, my nephew started at the back, and he's wrapping it around to the front. And what we're doing is attaching this at the bottom of the dough. Remember where we placed it right on top of that padded yoroi obi belt? We're going to be using this to help really cinch it in and keep it in place on top of that padded belt. You can see a bit in the back of me, there's a little bit of a red tassel there hanging off the back of the back plate. We want to make sure that that doesn't get caught in the sash. That's one of the things that constantly happened to me when putting armor on by myself, but I find much, much easier when I have a helper. Now working our way back up, we're going to be moving on to the osode. As usual, we're going to start with the left before doing the right. Mine are set up with a loop in the front, so what happens is I pass that loop through the kohaze and seme by unattaching the ones that we attached earlier to hold it up temporarily so that we can put the loop through and then just reattach it again. Moving to the middle of the osode, there is a ring on it that gets tied off to a pair of laces on the top of the watagami shoulder straps. That's tied up to keep it in place without being so high that it hits the helmet, but without being so low that it's sagging too much. To finish attaching the osode, the tassel in the back will be placed through the bow on the back of the back plate, and I will have a separate video showing how to run all of these through both for osode and for regular sode as well.
Now that we have the left side done, we're going to repeat on the right. We're going to be doing that front loop. We're going to be tying it off in the middle on that ring, and we're going to be passing the tassel through the back. I'm going to speed this up since the process is the same on the right as it was on the left. Now just as I've opted to wear Kogake with this, I'm also going to be wearing a Nodawa. This is a supplemental neck guard, so he's going to be tying it off around my neck and then placing it underneath of the breastplate. This will be the same way that I was wearing it when I didn't have help with armor, but this is also one of those things that is much easier with the helper because I don't have to try to reach behind myself and tie it, especially trying to reach behind myself to tie it with the Osode. They can get in the way a little bit. It's not anything drastic, but it's one of those things that can be a little bit frustrating to fiddle with if you have to keep doing it too many times. All right, with the Nodawa in place, we're going to move on to doing the Mempo. Now, just like when I was doing this by myself, we want to make sure that the lacing goes up over top of the ears to help hold it in place a little bit for when we get the Kabuto tied down. If you really need to, you can tie it off underneath of the ears and then use the Kabuto to secure it in place. But I find that it's plenty comfortable with the lacing over top of the ears. Now, just like in the other video, the piece for the nose is removed to keep the mustache out of the way. We're going to do a simple bow on the Kabuto to get it into place. And I do have another video on how to actually tie off the Kabuto, and I'll have a link to that at the end of this video. Now we go ahead, we put the mustache back into place by reattaching that nose piece, and then I am all armored up and starting to feel like a really hardcore samurai. And that's how you armor up with assistance. If you haven't seen my other video for how to armor up without assistance and you're thinking about getting your own armor, take a look at that because you can get dressed without help. And if you want to see how to do one of the fancy ties on the Kabuto, take a look at the linked video here that'll be popping up. And that's about it. So as always, this is Samurai James saying thanks for watching and sayonara.